This is Vince Lara in the College of Applied Health Sciences at the University of Illinois. Today I speak with Nick Bird, Associate Professor in the Department of Kinesiology and Community Health, to talk about his research on nutrition and exercise performance. So Nick, what inspires your research? Um, yeah, sure. You know, I'd say the inspiration comes from, you know, answering a lot of real world, real world questions. Um, a lot of our research is aimed at, you know, being translational in nature. Um, most of our work is done in vivo in humans, um, which obviously is a, is a good model to be able to have translational messages. Mm-hmm. Now, why pick Illinois? I noticed you, you went to Ball State, right? So you were in the general region, but why pick here for, you know, for where you're teaching? Uh, well, you know, I like corn. I like to see it. I like to eat it. No, um, but in all <laughs> seriousness, um, so a lot of my research is um, uh, take specialized infrastructure. Um, in particular, it would take um, you know this kind of R1 infrastructure which we have here at the University of Illinois. Um, so coming to a place that um, could support my research needs, but also had um, this, this good colleagues in place to create a synergy with my research, and Illinois sort of checked all those boxes Mm -hmm. Um, so it just made a lot of sense to come here and as you sort of alluded to um, I was born in Ohio so it's sort of home as well in terms of the Midwest gotcha now your your recent research on the effectiveness of potatoes as exercise fuel got great media attention so I'm wondering what led you to study that yeah I mean a lot of my research you know what I mean I I view um, we're my research team. We are truly a team. So any any project we we develop, I sort of develop it in collaboration with my research team. And what I mean by that, my, my PhD students um, normally. Um, so this that that particular idea was sort of derived in collaboration with um, one of my formal students, uh, Joe Beals. Um, you know, he he happened to be um, a cyclist, um, anecdotally. Um, you know, he used potatoes as a fueling source during during exercise. Um, scientifically, it made a lot of sense to, to to test that as a fueling source. I mean, when you keep in mind, right, uh, sports marketing is sports nutrition marketing in particular. Um, right, they sort of have tuned us to think that uh, we need these specialized um, sports gels. Mm-hmm. Um, which you know they do work, uh, but they can they can become expensive, and just trying to you know find a strategy that's not too fancy, simple, accessible, um, cost effective, um, sort of underpin that sort of idea. And potato just happened to be you know car- nutrient dense carbohydrate food source. Um, students wanted to do it scientifically; it made sense, so we went for it, um, and then. And then sometimes, I always say some of the most, um, I guess the best way to some of those weird questions, mm-hmm. <laughs> I always get the most media attention. Sure. <laughs> and that happened to be one of those, right? I think it's because everybody could kind of relate to it, right? There's a lot of runners out there. Um, it was timed well around the marathon, some of the major marathons. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of the news, news networks just grabbed it and ran. You, you, you talked about, you know, in this in your answer here about cost-effective means. Sure. And so I noticed some of your research really focuses on that, promoting health and, and uh, promoting health through diet and exercise changes in a cost-effective way. Yeah, I'd say that, that's, that's fair. I mean, um, I, a, lot of, a lot of our work is focused on, you know, whole food-based approaches, mm-hmm. right? Um, again, I think we get tuned that um, sometimes certain strategies um, have to be, you know, you know, specially formulated or highly specialized. But a lot of research is aimed at, you know, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be that fancy. And let's mm-hmm. be honest here, um, you know, you know, whole food is, you know, a lot of my work is aimed at uh, protein, dietary protein in particular, trying to optimize that mm-hmm. um, within 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 a diet. Um, you know, um, you know, in terms of that. Uh, Protein supplements are are huge, and once again, you know they could become expensive. Um, and 
we need to be more focused on you know food first approaches is what I what I say you know supplements are fine but they should do, be just that a supplement right but in, a lot of times these are the, the frontline strategy for people um, but we, we need to stay stay focused on you know the food first approaches um, you know exercise is is a brilliant uh, tool to utilize to support a healthy lifestyle. I mean, it's you know it goes back to the old, the old adage: you, know, or you are what you eat and how you move, right? Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what our research shows. It's aimed at showing showing that, right? I, I know that you you hope to look at aging and chronic disease and how exercise and diet can combat those conditions. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm I'm a trained as a muscle physiologist, mm-hmm. um, so. You know, a lot of times we're focused on skeletal muscle health, um, and I d- we do that for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, not to get too reductionist, uh, but you know, muscle has a lot of pertinent roles in, in a healthy laugh- lifestyle. In particular, huge contributor to basal metabolic rate, which for most of us is um, the, the biggest contributor to total daily energy expenditure. So, we want to make sure we're protecting muscle um, to try to prevent, you know. For weight maintenance, essentially, and certainly if you are, you know, under a period of energy restriction and lose some weight, you don't want to lose muscle because that's going to put you at a bit greater chance for weight regain. Um, but for metabolic health as well as for performance, um, we're focused on muscle. But you know, our experiments, we we study um, obesity, obviously prevalent disease, um, especially in Western society, mm-hmm. end stage renal disease, um, aging. These are all areas of emphasis for us because, uh, once again, these are all situations where muscle health is compromised. So we need strategies um, to sort of, um, you know, help or improve or augment muscle health. So hopefully we can ultimately improve overall health. My thanks to Nick Bird. This has been A Few Minutes With.